Hi. Welcome to day 492. Uh, you have finished NTI Revelation. And really, NTI Revelation finished on the note of awakening. But let me just review a little of that for you. Starting with NTI Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 3. This is something you must be willing to do. You must be willing to rest the thinking mind at every opportunity given you. Learn to recognize your opportunities to rest the thinking mind. When you feel to go into prayer, rest and let a prayer rise from the heart. When you feel to answer a question in the mind, rest and let the answer find its way into your awareness. When you feel tired and unsure as to what to do, rest and let a feeling of what to do enter you. When you feel inclined to speak and don't know what to say, rest and let what to say be given. And when you feel upset, or saddened, or afraid, rest, and let illusions fade. So thinking is the ego, because the I that is the ego is the foundation of all of that thinking. And so in order to realize the true self, we need to rest the thinking. You know, one of the things it said was, um, if you feel to pray, rest and let a, let a prayer rise up in you. So instead of thinking, oh, this is what I want, I'm going to pray and ask for that, right? You just follow that feeling to pray. You close your eyes and you just rest with silence. And then you let the prayer come. I am grateful to be here with my heart. I am grateful to be guided by whatever that is that guides me. I call it God, I call it Holy Spirit. Those are names we have given. In reality, it's a mystery. And yet it's a mystery that comes from beyond me. And so I feel compelled to trust it. I place myself in your hands once again. Once again, I surrender. Take me. That's my prayer. Take me. That I may know you. That which is beyond me. Amen. See? When you do that, you also notice there's a silence in the mind afterwards. Because you're touched by silence. The words somehow appear out of the silence and you're touched by silence. And so what you feel is silence. I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore, but I used to. One-on-one -on -one spiritual mentoring. And whenever I would start a call with someone, I would simply say, Holy Spirit, this is yours. And in that way, I emptied myself out. And then I just listened. 
And then if anything came that was said, it came out of that silence. Because in just listening, there was no thinking. Of course, I have a chest at my house filled with journals where, you know, in my earlier days as a spiritual student, I had all kinds of questions. Questions about, you know, what this paragraph meant in A Course in Miracles, questions about this problem in my life and how am I to see this, just tons of questions. And every time I'd write out those questions, I would then empty myself. I wouldn't think, I wouldn't try and figure out the answer. I would empty myself and let the answer come. Everything of real value comes out of the silence, not out of the thinking. And so one of the things we want to learn to do is to become silent. That's what's meant by rest the mind. And in fact, NTI Revelation says in chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, when the thinking mind is rested, the vision of spirit is given. It means that you see with new eyes, not the eyes of the person which sees through the conditioning that's been acquired in the lifetime. The vision of spirit, clarity, wisdom. It also says in verses 7 to 10, peaceful dreams end in peace. That's when the silence has become more of a primary way of being for us. It doesn't mean that there aren't ever thoughts, but the thoughts are now meaningless. And the silence is what's profound the silence is what's valued the silence is what's loved the peace stillness isness and then you know the world even though everything keeps right on going it has a different character for us there's the transient that which is passing passing whatever comes today will be gone tomorrow right and then there's the real, which is right here, silent all the time, powerful. Peaceful dreams end in peace. When, you know, Jesus said something about, you know, when you see the bud on the fig tree, I don't remember, I don't remember the exact wording, but when you see the bud on the fig tree, you know, you know, that soon there will be leaves, right? <laughs> something like that. Or, or maybe maybe it's something about when the fig is coming. I don't remember. But if you, in the spring, when you see the buds on the tree, you know soon there will be leaves, there will be blossoms. But when, when there's this stillness, when it's more primary, I think you know that awakening is coming. I mean, this is the bud that blossoms into awakening. And look at what NTI Revelation says about that. Chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. It says, death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Do you know what that means? It means that everything that isn't real, Everything that doesn't come from the purity of God ends forever. And there's just God, just truth, just reality. That's the second death. What happens after the second death, which sometimes we call a second awakening, right? Like the first awakening is awakening to the vision of spirit. That was the death of seeing through the ego. And then the second awakening 
is awakening to God. That is the death of everything that is not God. And I don't want to imply that it's the death of spirit. Spirit is one with God. It's just that it's a higher vision. NTI Revelation 21 says, I saw all that I could not see before. This is talking about after that second death or that second awakening. I saw all that I could not see before. I saw that I am in God and God is in me and separation of the two is impossible. I saw that God is in my brothers. My brothers are in me and separation and division are impossible. All that I had seen before, which caused me pain and suffering and loneliness, were wiped out forever. Before me, I saw only the expression of perfect freedom. And I knew what I saw was love. NTI Revelation chapter 22 says, Then the angel showed me the water of the river of life, clear as crystal, flowing from God and through God. And I was not apart from its flow. I was within its flow. I was a part of its flow. And its flow came from me. I saw that the flow which comes from God is everything. And all that is, is a part of its flow. Let me share something with you from NTI Colossians. Chapter two, listen to this. You are all things and all things are you. You are the life that flows in and out of all things. You are the wisdom and knowledge that travels on the current of life, which moves through everything seen and unseen. In this way, you are absent from nothing and nothing is disconnected from you. Last week, I shared a little bit from this book with you. I mentioned this book, The Path to No Self. I talked about how uh, this grandiosity was kind of like a last temptation for her. Um, you know, the false true desire, you know, the idea you made it when you haven't. And uh, that when she transcended that grandiosity, this is when she awoke. I want to read for you the description of when she awoke. She says, I understood that God is in things only because all things are in him. And thus with God on the inside and God on the outside, God is a flow through flowing freely through all that exists. God is a flow through flowing through freely <laughs> through all that exists. And even that which he flows through is a part of the great flow. Once the self disappears, one of the first things we see or experience is the great flow and how all things are truly in God, not separate, and that God is no longer in the self nor is he the self. God loving himself in himself. Okay. Yeah, you know, so much like the description written in NTI Revelation. Yet I'm sure Bernadette Roberts never read NTI Revelation. And when I scribed NTI Revelation, I had never heard of Bernadette Roberts. These descriptions are pointing to the truth 
that we realize, the glorious truth that we realize when we complete this process of letting go of the ego, letting go of the thinking, letting go of identifying with the thinking. What does it mean to worship God? It means to be grateful for all that you are and to seek no change from it. That's interesting because NTI Romans chapter two told us that the wish that started this whole experience of separate selves in a separate world was the wish for things to be different than they are. And now there's this coming home to our self as everything and being grateful for all that it is and wishing no change from it. Kind of reminds me of a book title I once heard from Paradise Lost to Paradise Regained. Come, the call is within you and the door is open. Come and thirst no more. Come and see that you are the river of life. And that's how NTI ends with awakening. So now you're in a little bit of a review period and I'm not gonna go over the review sections with you. I'll let you contemplate those on your own and see what you wanna pick up from the sections I chose for review. I do wanna say that typically I come every seven days and do a video. It'll be about nine days before I'm back again. I'm going to come back on day 501. After you have finished the 500 days, on day 501, the day after the 500 days, there will be another video. Until then, enjoy your review. You will complete awareness, watching awareness meditation before you get to the end. And then you're going to have a few days where you're asked just to retreat to a quiet place and practice self-inquiry. Practice looking beyond the thinking, beyond the feelings for awareness and keeping your attention with awareness. If you notice your attention goes to something, maybe sensations in the head, you might do something like say, what sees this? What sees these sensations? What's aware of these sensations? And turn your attention back to awareness. But a few days of practicing self-inquiry, it's interesting because also in this book, although I didn't mark it and I don't know if I could find it quickly, she talks about how the question she asked that brought her to wake up. Ah, oh, here it is. I found it. Let me just read to you. She says, before passing over the divide, which meant before awakening, right? Before passing over the divide, however, I experienced one more upheaval in the center, a battle of such gigantic proportions, it was beyond me already kind of reminded me of that scene in Little Buddha when um, Buddha sat watching this battle going on, but he just sat watching it. Before passing over the divide, however, I experienced one more upheaval in the center, a battle of such gigantic proportions. It was beyond me already. I stood looking on as an outside observer, just like Buddha watching this inner battle. I stood looking on as an outside observer, a bewildered observer, and for the first time asked myself, who or what is watching this? Who or what is watching this? The question occurred to her. Again, if you wanna read this book, it's called The Path to Know Self, Life at the Center by Bernadette Roberts has some wonderful little tips in it about the awakening process. 
You will have another weekend assignment this weekend. Again, I'll see you on day 501 after you finish the 500 days. So you're on your own for the review. Hmm. See you soon. Bye.